welcome to the Westmoreland Museum of American Arts Virtual Programming. Although we are gathered virtually, we want to continue a practice we began when gathering in person of acknowledgments. The Westmoreland Museum of American Art is situated upon the traditional lands of the Adena, Hopewell, Monongahela, Delaware, Shawnee, and Seneca Cayuga peoples. We honor all of the indigenous nations and their land with great gratitude and acknowledge the genocide and continuous displacement of indigenous peoples. We also acknowledge the enslaved Africans whose labor built this country during the colonial era and beyond. We acknowledge the harm inflicted upon the indigenous communities and people of color across the country, which guides and inspires our work as a museum. Thank you for joining us for the Boom Lunch Break. The program you're about to experience is a virtual conversation with artists in residence and Quinique and D.S. Kinzel, Westmoreland director Ann Craybill, and Boom Concepts co-founder, Thomas Agnew. The four will be discussing the process and works created during the residency, the Greensburg experience from a Pittsburgh point of view, and what's next for the artists and the Boom partnership. I'd like to introduce each of our guests today before we get to meet them. Anquanee Kinzel is an extremely versatile vocalist and educator specializing in opera, classical music, jazz, and soul. Anquanee is the founder and director of Groove Aesthetic, a Pittsburgh-based multidisciplinary artist collective experimenting with contemporary performance and collaborative processes. Currently, she serves as the director of programs of for Arts Education Collaborative. D.S. Kinzel is an award-winning creative entrepreneur and cultural agitator. He expresses his creativity through the mediums of painting, installation, curating, non-traditional performance, and public art. DS is also the co-founder of Boom Concepts, founded in 2014. Boom Concepts is a creative hub dedicated to the advancement of black and brown artists representing marginalized communities. Over the course of time, Boom Concepts has curated 50 exhibitions on site, paid out over 40, 45,000 dollars in artists and contract fees and produce 200 plus events across the country. J. Thomas Agnew is a cultural entrepreneur based in Pittsburgh. Thomas is the co-founder of Boom Concepts, a co-working and community art space in Pittsburgh and the EIC of Genesis Magazine, a media outlet focusing on youth culture, lifestyle and young creative entrepreneurs. Through Genesis Magazine and Boom Concepts and national networks, Thomas has produced numerous arts and culture events in collaboration with partners such as the Carnegie Museum of Art, the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust, August Wilson, African American Cultural Center, Thrival Festival, Pittsburgh Music Ecosystem Project, and Love Pittsburgh Music and more. All right, let's not delay this any longer. Welcome to the virtual stage and Quinique and Diaz Kinzel, Thomas Agnew, and Anne Craybill. Thanks, Mona. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to head backstage and I will listen from there. <laughs> Thanks, Lana. I don't know if we're going to have a banjo. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, welcome. I'm Ann Crable, and I'm really excited to be in conversation with Ann Quinique and DS and Thomas. And I'm going to give just a little context to how this came to be and that I know. Um, Thomas and I are going to ask questions of DS and, and Quinique about their experience so far. So the Westmoreland had um, this hands-on space like a lot of museums have for families, right? And um, then COVID happened and we had been rethinking this space anyway. We had to shut it down and it's it's a pretty big space. Like, what would you say, 3,000 square feet or so separated into a couple of rooms? And so it was just sitting empty. And then at the same time, we had some restricted funding for programming that we couldn't do because we couldn't gather in person. And then at the same time, Thomas and I were talking with a larger group of folks from Pittsburgh about how can we support financially and advance the careers of specifically black and brown artists. And so this trifecta came together along with the fact that we own a building across the street that has apartments in it and a tenant left. And so we had a, an apartment where artists could actually live. And so here we are. We have co-founders Thomas and DS of Boom who came together with the Westmoreland to collaborate on a, a residency. Um, but DS also decided to become one of the first artists in residence. So, I know Thomas has some questions about that. 
I need, first of all, I need to know where this banjo came from. I have not seen the banjo in the Kinsaland area, so I need to know a little bit of background on this this, this beautiful banjo, Diaz. <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk while he holds it up. Um, hi, everyone. It's so good to be here in conversation. Thank you so much, Ann and Thomas, and thanks so much, Mona, for holding it down. Um, so this banjo uh, was actually like a Christmas present yep. um, that I got for Daryl because he expressed that he said, you know, he's he's uh, he's very creative. He's a very art kind of person. So, you know, some days he just wakes up and it's like something different. So this day it was he woke up and it was like, I want a banjo. <laughs> I want a banjo. And I was like, really? And we've been collecting instruments. We collect instruments in our home um, for our little one to play with. Um, who you'll, who is around. Yeah. Yes. something back on the TV. Oh, no. It'll be okay. okay. All right. The bike. The bike is bad. Yes. Okay. Be careful. And you know, one of one of our wishes and one of our growing points as a family was to collect instruments. So we have like a variety of instruments. You know, I had said I wanted a banjo. I felt like in my soul that I needed a banjo. And um, you know, and Quinny got me a banjo for Christmas. So I don't know how to play it. I haven't gotten lessons. It's just like performance art. So, yeah, this is our banjo. I thought it'd be good. You know, the banjo is one of the few instruments that was, like, created and founded in America. And it was, like, founded it's founded um, by American slaves. So, you know, I thought it was appropriate um, for today's conversation, just like with this task to American culture and American history. Well, well, thank you for that little bit of history and some of that background on this great great banjo and you know your your growing family uh instruments that you are, yeah. are you have at Kinsel Land. see you know some more instruments but you know i i, I want to jump in and and kind of talk a little bit about the residency um you know i think about the work that we do in the space where a lot of most of it is admin work um and you know i know that participating in the residency is a little bit different from what we do at Boom at our own space. So, you know, kind of, I want you to talk about how does it feel like to rely on some of the other people at, you know, the Westmoreland to kind of help and give you some room to work during the residency versus, you know, doing that work at home or doing the work at Boom, you know, in your space. Well, yeah, I'll go first with that one. That's, um, man, I, I just can't tell you how much it meant to have a team of folks who were really, you know, willing and able um, to assist and kind of help us bring some of our ideas to light and to fruition. Um, and, and, you know, for me as a musician and a singer, you know, I've been like, I've rented my own PA and gone and set it up and picked it up and set it up and broke it down and took it back and, you know, all that stuff on my own. Um, and so it was just really wonderful to have to be able to kind of like walk into the museum and everything be already set up. And we're just like, wow, that's a crazy um, because there there is a lot of labor involved in, you know, doing art and being a musician as well. Um, there's a lot of equipment you always have to carry with you. Um, I'm, I'm a vocalist, right? One to talk. So usually I don't, I don't have much that I have to carry with me. Um, cause my instrument is my body. And so, um, so that, so, but even still like there's things that are required. So it was just, uh, it was a great, great, um, blessing to have the team just really ready to assist with those technical items. Um, and it really kind of gave us the room to be comfortable and to be relaxed and to really sort of like bring our ideas to fruition and really focus on that part um, and not so much like the technical side of things. Yeah. And, and Quinique and I, not only are we individual artists, but a lot of our practice really centers on curating work, producing work, community organizing so, you know, with us having this opportunity to serve as artists, I think it gave us a chance to go back into our individual practice, explore some things that don't necessarily take other people, 
um, and have a team of support around us as opposed to kind of like organizing all those pieces together. You know, so even, um, you know, we have a, a, a burgeoning DJ practice together uh, with vinyl. And it seems like we still haven't really figured out the technology piece of it. Um, so every time we have like a little practice gig uh, or an experience, that was like the biggest hurdle for us each time. Uh, you know, we're really just wanting to focus on the art, focus on creating, focus on cre uh, building our dynamic together as artists. And, you know, with our experience at the Westmoreland, specifically with the DJ opportunity, um, all we had to do was pick our records, come in and be ready to play because the team at the Westmoreland had everything organized from the lighting to the technology to the setting. Um, and it was just really a benefit for, for us and allowed us to have fun and enjoy and explore the practice of it as opposed to um, the administrative piece. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll say for us, when you all were like, we want to do this DJ set and we got our team together, we were like, we're outsourcing this. Because <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing either. Yeah. And that just made it easy on everybody. You know what I mean? And um, shout out to the folks who did come, who did the setup for us because they, they knew what to do and it was a great setup. It was everything we needed. So, you know, that's even better to have people operate in their expertise. And even, you know, the Westmoreland Museum giving, you know, telling when we wanted to do the DJ set and how we wanted to explore us, connecting us locally with record store owners and record shops so that, you know, we can extend our practice of exploring for records or having records handed down from our family or finding our family's favorite recording artists. You know, we can extend that practice into Greensburg, which was really exciting. Um, and, you know, even one of the one of the albums on screen right now, the Dion Warwick uh, collection of gold, I think it is, uh, which is like a, a really rare mixtape we found in Greensburg down the street from the museum. And, you know, it was something that we played in, and it's been one of our top favorites in our personal collection. So I'd love to ask a follow up question then for that. Um, you know, Greensburg, we're just 35 miles outside of Pittsburgh, but it, it feels like quite a journey because there's bridges and there's tunnels and there's traffic. And um, a lot of people in Pittsburgh haven't even been to Greensburg. And I would just love to know your impression of like how you got to know the community, um, you know, especially in the COVID context, where it's really hard to socially interact with people. Yeah, I would say we had a, um, you know, I think we had really pleasant, um, yes. <laughs> we had a great opportunity to connect with folks as we were, you know, there, we kind of experienced the residency in three phases. There was like the initial kind of exploration as people were still figuring out what COVID was and what was going on. Um, everybody was really welcome to us. It didn't, it was a great escape for us and an amazing, you know, third location where, um, you know, we sometimes hang out at Boom or even on, on our Penn Avenue community. But when that was shut down, you know, we really were able to explain, expand our family footprint, you know, to the museum, to um, the apartment that's provided through the residency and through, you know, some of the little shops and stuff that was, that are available in the downtown, you know, if since it is a downtown area in Greensburg that has this really interesting um, and and strong infrastructure uh, of a business district, um, and it's you know as it's coming along and kind of growing back to where it could be or where it once was, um, that allowed us like just a few nice safe spaces that we could explore and kind of build some community you know that expands beyond the Westmoreland Museum. Yeah. Yes. And I would say like just the <laughs> just the being um as the apartment being there and like just how walkable the downtown you know community and district is really made it easy for us to just kind of walk down the street and visit different shops and get to know folks that way. Um and you know, we often did reflect on, you know, what was happening in terms of COVID, but also what was happening like politically. Um, in the country and, and our safety in the space as well. Um, we had like some really very real conversations about that. 
And I think, um, you know, the apartment really offered us a safe haven where we could still be in this space, but we weren't necessarily like out in the community and, you know, sort of interfacing with the public as we would be if it weren't COVID and if it weren't. Um, so, uh, so you know, if it all really did seem to work out. And, you know, once again, like the museum's team was really agile in helping us figure it out. Um, and we and we did it together. So it, um, it we always felt um, like secure in that way as well. Like, yeah. And I like to add, you know, uh, Westmoreland County was in a lot of news for politics and um, individual interviews of of like a slice of America or you know what you may experience. And there were some you know interesting aspects and viewpoints coming out. Um, about that and in regards to what the identity of the area may be. But we really experienced a different side of, of the region and of the town, of the cultural centers, of the neighbors um, who, you know, I really believe didn't get an opportunity to be represented in a lot of the national news that was presented about the area, about the town, about the county in particular. So, you know, people say like there's always multiple experiences in a place. Um, you know, it was it was a it was a bit disorienting at times because, you know, we were really keeping up on what was viewing like locally and nationally. We like started putting like Google alerts on for news that, you know, may be aligned or maybe a little bit different from our viewpoints or lens. Um, but what we experienced on the ground um, was always really separate from that and, you know, provided uh, a space for things and opinions and expressions uh, that were really connected with our values and beliefs. And, you know, that was like a pleasant surprise of the experience. And I think, you know, that's oftentimes with like black, brown, femme, queer women, artists, you know, consider when you're thinking about a residency that's set in a more rural area, you know, like what is your on the ground experience going to be? What is the protection around? Um, and, you know, all of our connections and communications, even if we had some differences, uh, there was never like any violence or even any real clashes. There was always like really positive dialogue um, or like staying focused on what our main course was. And that's just a tribute to your team and to the reputation of the museum, I believe, in the community. Yeah, so, um, you know, I definitely want to talk with both of you or, you know, I want you to explain a little bit about um, the work you wanted to explore during the residency. Um, you know, I because I, obviously I know what you guys do. I know, DS, also your work when you're, you know, you've been placing some items in, in the city. Um, you know, again, you guys talk about the research um, and, and just checking out the surroundings while also doing that work in Westmoreland. So kind of talk about, you know, both of you, you know, what was, you know, something different possibly that you were, you wanted to explore during this time? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I got to explore what it means to be like a dad artist, <laughs> really. You know, I think I had some intentions of doing some other work or exploring some other themes um, but I think the biggest kind of through line for me in the residency was exploring my role as an artist within my family. So like within relationship to my wife, where we explored through the DJ um, set, you know, getting vinyl together, talking about our practice, uh, what our practice looks like collaboratively, um, you know, taking some of the really intimate um things that we do in our household and making them more performative or document, documenting them in a performative way. So that's where the chess comes in. Um, we also play craps, which is like a new game for us that we started to explore. You know, also like talking about where, where those games and activities come from for us as black people. Um, you know, chess is like something that's near and dear to me. You know, I just had an elder pass who actually gifted me like one of my first chess boards, you know, and just like to be able to play chess in a museum space, like in this like gilded wooden oak room owned by the melons. Whereas like my elder would probably wouldn't be allowed in the, in the melon, anything except for maybe melon bank 
back in the day, you know, it's like really meaningful to be able to explore that together, you know? So it's like being a father, being a husband and, you know, what does it mean to share out that experience? Like I had Liberty kind of remix some of my prints, do some collage, do some painting. Um, we would do like uh, tours of the work. So, you know, she's not in childcare. So it's like the museum became her daycare, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, like, you know, that's not necessarily what I anticipated, but that was like a huge part of the experience. And we have like really, really strong documentation of that as well, which, you know, is like we can use to create um, new images or, you know, we've been doing like some performative uh, poetry or like some mixtape stuff that are just like really that will end up being family relics, but we're sharing them in a, in a like public space. Yeah. Um, so that was like really the biggest part for me. Yeah. Whew. Um, you know, I, I like to think that like Liberty also had her version <laughs> of a residency as well, which is just really, um, um, just such a this is such a beautiful privilege and and we're really grateful you know for her to have that experience too um so young and so you know for me I think it, it was um yeah for you know definitely a collaborative work like you know I'm a very private person so it was weird to kind of like do these things that we just do at home when we're chilling and hanging out um and to do them in front of people so that was like a different processing for me um and that's been and just like also like to have a formal um outlet a more formal outlet before for our, our dj stuff and um and it felt it felt a, i felt kind of shy you know what i mean to and uh, we and kind of weird sharing that stuff you know with the world um, but it was also a really important um i think process for me too in my work and, you know, because I think performance for me is just like a, a, it's a pillar and a really like sacred thing. I do a lot of performing. Um, and so this residency has not been about performing at all. <laughs> um, and and that was like the greatest gift because for so long, much of my practice has been about, you know, being on stage, performing with different bands, you know, um, putting together shows and producing and, you know, and creating things. Um, now I'm really thinking about, and the residency really gave me an opportunity to dig into my writing um, and to planning um, some recording. So I'm excited to, you know, start continue along my journey of just like creating my own sound and my own music, working with people that I really love and respect and want and have been wanting to kind of like get in a room with for a long time. Um, so it gave me, you know, room to do all of that, um, as did, you know, just like the circumstances of the pandemic in terms of us really being inside and performing, really not being a safe thing. And certainly not me as a, as a vocalist, a singer, a super spreader. I like to <laughs> I say in spaces, watch out for the super spreader. Um, so there were just a lot of, um, you know, nuances and circumstances around like what it means to perform. Um, and so this gave me an opportunity to really dig in and, and I'm so grateful for that. And so I've been like planning and doing all that stuff. Um, and so hopefully when it's nice out and when it's more safe, we can do um, some a, a concert of some sorts. And, and I kind of talked about that, but um, we, you know, love to do that when it's when it's safe to do so. And then I'd be really excited to share like some new things. Um, and so I've been doing a bit of composing as well and arranging um, of some of my old work. And so that's been challenging um, and a really great exploration for me. So, and, and just also like Daryl said, the family piece of it, like how do we do our work as a family? And this is a new thing for us. Um, it's important that we find that balance for us um, to, to really be kind of feeling like we're living in our full potential. Um, and you know, and what does that mean for our little one? And uh, so we've had a lot of great opportunity for her to come along with us and learn and have fun and play. Her work is play, I always like to say. And so um, you know, she's playing and and having these experiences. And so that's a wonderful thing. 
And I think yeah. the the greatest piece was like there was never any pressure from the institution that we had to have a finalized object or share out. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of ideas that are kind of still rumbling and tumbling around. Yeah. Um, like I, I was able to just dedicate a lot of time and space to reading, you know, and making that a, a big part of my practice. So not only does the studio have like a huge library of monographs and photo books and, um, you know, catalogs from the museum and from different spaces, but there's like been some literature in our personal library that I've been like wanting to tackle for a long time. So just like I kept it at the apartment and like every time I went up there, I just like jumped into this huge um, Glenn Ligon monograph called uh, Collisions, Crashes and Collisions, I believe. And it's just like I feel like my brain is like exploded. But, you know, just like knowing that like I can have time to read as part of a residency was critical. You know, it's like and I can just feel it as I'm like looking at work because, you know, I would read then just be able to go to a museum and like to be able to read Glenn Ligon's work and then um, and like essays from a bunch of people he respected and it has been influenced by and then like go across the museum to the African-American exhibition that was up. It was just like this immersion of just like black excellence, you know, our family, the items I brought as tools, the exhibition at the museum that are just like you. Most black people wouldn't even consider or most people in general wouldn't consider that to be. 30 to 40 minutes, uh, depending on traffic, like outside of the city proper. And we were really able to like connect a lot of dots and like make that happen. So, you know, just like we made stuff, we explored stuff, but just like being able to finish like four books over the past six months, like I don't think I would have been able to do that without, you know, this space for this residency and thinking about it in that way. Yeah, I think there's so much labor that goes into production that's invisible that, you know, I mean, it is really, it's reading, it's the just, it's the thinking, it's the processing, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about your interactions. And I know, and Quinique, you directly interacted with the collection, you know, so how it was to engage in a space that has a permanent collection, but that also had the temporary exhibition. We had the Smithsonian African-American art collection on view um, during a, a large part of your residency. And I know we have some pics of Anquinique in the space as well that we can share. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what it was like to be um, in, in a space that had a, a art all around you. Absolutely, that was, um, that was amazing. I mean, I'll work backwards. So we did just um, uh, have the, the great privilege of doing a photo shoot in the, um, in the galleries. Um, a shout out to uh, Sarah Honey Young, um, who is our photographer. And this was just kind of a thing, you know, as artists, like, I, and as a, for me as a performer too, like I always need photos and it's been years. And so I kind of was like, you know, we have this beautiful space. Um, we should, we should take advantage of that and, and, and take some, some really cool um, photos. And so we did that and we had a great time doing so. Shout out to Dara as well, who was kind of like spotting us, making sure we didn't damage any of the very beautiful and also very expensive <laughs> art in the galleries um, to make sure that we stayed safe and so did all of the art. Um, but that was just a really great experience. I mean, I think we, we, uh, we had a series of... Um, you know, outfits and, and accessories. And we really kind of just walked around and, and pulled our inspiration from the pieces um, in terms of the posing and also like the the things we chose. So, um, so that was a really cool, like collaborative experience and someone's not so happy. Um, and so, um, and so, yeah, and so that was really awesome. And then, and then early on being able to come into the, museum um, right at the top of our residency um, and be able to experience that uh, that exhibition um, with our like local heroes, um, Thaddeus Mosley and Vanessa German and uh, Tina Brewer and so many more. Like that was a, that, that kind of um, aligned in a way that I think um, helped us to uh, really envision, um, really envision, I think our own work or, 
our, our future goals um, and, and really gain inspiration from this really beautiful work um, that also really spoke deeply to us. Like Daryl said, you know, just like connecting the dots and like remembering and learning new information. And so it really kind of felt like in, you know, us digging through the archives of our, our heritage in some ways. And that was, I think, pivotal at the very top of our residency to really kick it off. Um, and it also sort of helped the space, I think, feel a little bit more um, comfortable for us to just like move around and be, to know that we were also joined by, you know, our artists, ancestors and peers and, um, those that we admire and our elders. So that was um, that was just yeah, just really a quite amazing experience. And um, and yeah, and just to kind of and I think the opportunity too to you know go and visit pieces, and then come back again and this like coming back each time, and seeing something new in each of the works or seeing it from a different able or like a different time of day, how the sunlight comes into the space. Um, so that experience too of just coming back again and again and again, just really, um, I think, like helped it penetrate deeply for us and in influencing our work. I have no clue what the question was. We, um, we, we got we got a new one to follow up so that you can yeah, well, you can take the next yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that equity did a great job of describing, you know, some of the other pieces, um, and you know, like I, I really. I enjoy seeing the experience, y'all experience, you know, there, being able to do stuff with the family, being able to interact with the work, being able to work and, you know, just kind of hearing the story, seeing the photos, um, you know, looking at the presentation. But um, I kind of want to know, were you able to challenge each other on some of the work that you wanted to do or some of the work that you you know, we're thinking about, what did you challenge, D, you know, DS on, hey, you know, you've been thinking about this, or DS, you know, was Aunt Quinique working on something, you're like, hey, I think you should explore this, you know, kind of talk about, you know, what you were able to do, I think, within that space, um, that you probably wouldn't be challenging each other, just like sitting at home. You take that one? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I was doing a lot of street art, um, and exploring that part of my practice in a different way. You know, I typically have done um, like more shrine work and, you know, the, a lot of this stuff was more wheat paste based. Uh, so she would give me pointers around like still staying true to my painting practice, even in the wheat paste. So making sure there was texture, making sure there was repetition, um, you know, Anquinique and a colleague of ours challenged me around scale. So there's like a larger, a lot of larger things. Um, and then, you know, I've been also exploring this icon and symbol and more um, like material goods. And so, you know, Anquinique really pushed me around uh, placing some merchandise in the museum shop. So, you know, not only could people see these items around town and on some of the infrastructure that's been abandoned in Greensburg, um, or maybe, uh, uh, you know, people kind of a little bit forgotten about it, but when they visit the museum, there's also these references on um, cups and mugs and uh, puzzles and socks and prints, uh, doing like a series of painted prints um, and outside of the wheat paste work as well. You know, so Anquinique is really like always trying to challenge me to, you know, the wheat paste and the street art is a little like a little more wild um, or unkempt. Uh, and she's just like, hey, how do you kind of present this image or icon and like square it off or really like commodify it? Yeah, sorry, I'm all reacting. <laughs> that was a but nice way of saying the wife want me to make money. Yeah, and well, <laughs> and also I think, you know, it's like, how does the, I guess, yeah, I'm thinking, always thinking, like, how does the street art translate, um, you know, uh, because it, it is it's for the streets, which is cool, you know, and also, you know, it's like, what are those references back to what you see in the streets? It's like, can you also experience it in more ways? 
Um, but you know, that's interesting because you, you know, you always challenge me as well on um, when I'm doing, when I'm composing and recording, um, you're always challenging me on um, layering as well. So like layering my voice in different ways, um, my use of harmonies and really dense, tight harmonies. Um, and so he's always at, he's always saying that, that you should, um, you know, triple, you know, triple that or double that um, so that there's more texture in the sound. And so that's something that's interesting that we kind of like do, you know, challenge each other in that, in that way. And that's also like a, a, a large theme throughout your painting and your work. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, we're, we, we are, we try to be, we do try to be critical of each other in our practices. And I think us working, us being able to do a co-residency really worked for us because we take it seriously. Um, we each take our art seriously and, and we, we do try to challenge each other in real ways to, to make ourselves um, get better. Um, and, and, uh, and it's, and I'm grateful to have that mirror you know what I mean? And not only just like in my, in my creative work, but also in my life partner. So that's, that's awesome. That's just awesome. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, that's just really cool. <laughs> and you're up. Oh, sorry. I can't tell his screen based on the mute. <laughs> I'd love to hear from each of you, you know, having this time. So this was six months that you spent in this residency. Um, and it was kind of, you know, um, like long weekends coming into Greensburg and spending time with the collection and in the studio and, um, and at the apartment, because there was a time when we, the museum was closed, right. Because of, uh, of COVID, but I'd love to hear about what you think is, um, next, you know, post-residency, how you're going to take some of this work and, and how it's going to evolve into future projects. Yep, I'll go first. But um, so so for me, you know, my, my goal is that all this writing and um, collaborating that I'm doing um, in a sort of like behind the scenes um, will, will, result in some recording that I'm going to do this year, um, which will ultimately result in a release of some work in an official capacity, which will be the first time that I will have done so um, independently on my own as an artist, although I've been a part of many different projects. Um, this will be the first time, you know, I'm doing that on my own, which I've had lots of encouragement from Thomas and <laughs> others. <laughs> Um, over the years. So I've been really determined to to embark on that journey. And so my writing and organizing is all sort of like moving toward that that goal and direction. And I think for our, you know, for some of our collaborative work, which you can speak to also, but I think it's to continue this exploration and continue how to see how things evolve over time. Um, that's really like how our love letters a uh, project has kind of worked. It started as just like this one thing that happened and then we continue to explore that and continue to build on it. Um, so so I, I really like this idea that things are alive and that they change and evolve and grow and grieve and do stuff as we do stuff. Um, so I'm really excited to continue that, 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 um, that investigation um, of how things like how we start with these these small ideas and what they build into. So we'll continue that work. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm still putting things up around Greensburg. You know, I, I have a small book called uh, Sacraments, Totems and Shrines that's uh, centered on my like temporary street art practice both locally and globally. So I was considering maybe putting out a second edition that's, you know, based on the work that I completed here. It's like a photo book. Um, so I was thinking about the possibilities there, like how to organize the experience in a formal way. Um, you know, we have um, some ideas about activating some of the pre-existing infrastructure on the campus. So doing some design and research there you know, we're excited to be uh, working on a public art project in Greensburg. So, you know, it's like the museum and the relationships that 
you all have in the area have allowed us to start to build our own relationships and expand the projects that we're working on as individual artists and as Boom Concepts. So that's really exciting. Um, and, you know, there's always like a couple more things up the sleeve, but, you know, definitely, definitely thinking about since the museum is really um, open and um, kind in relation to the collection and the public, which is a very unique thing that you don't typically find with institutions. Um, we've worked with a, a, a nice amount of museums and you know, not only the individual staff, but I think the culture around the collection and exploring that collection and, and your online archive is something that feels alive, kind of to use Anquanique's words. And I think it's something, you know, since you know our residency is kind of wrapping up, but Boom has like an extended relationship, you know, I think it's something to really like not only investigate ourselves as artists, you know, the collection and can and keep poking at it or keep searching it, um, but also like making sure we're pressing on artists and community members to really think about the museum's collection and, you know, how it can live. And I just wanted to also share that, um, that we have another Just Sing workshop <laughs> coming up this coming <laughs> Sunday. So that's like, that's in the future um, for folks to please join and register. And, um, I'll just say that I, you know, we did a workshop last Sunday with a group of um, young people and an elder, and um, and it was really, really wonderful. My workshop is just um, exploring singing for self care and sort of some of the techniques that I use as a performer and a vocalist professionally, and just translating that through a wellness practice. Um, so that workshop will happen. Um, and, the, and I'm doing another workshop with the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council. So that that will be continuing. Um, so that's something for the future. But I'm also I'm really excited to um, to see like what happens next with like Boom being just really sort of entrenched in the Greensburg um, community and in, and in the museum activities. So the Just we'll Sing see. Adult Workshop is at full capacity. Oh, sorry, Maggie. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, that was, a, we got the sweetest note and Quinique forwarded from a participant in Just Sing. And we're a visual arts museum, so we would have never have thought to do a, you know, a singing workshop on self-care. But like, clearly there's intersections with all of, all of the arts. And this was, you know, most needed for the community. And it's the, the work that you are doing with youth, but also DS and Thomas, the work that you all are doing with youth around the park in interviewing youth on how they want to use this park that's this public art project that this park has just kind of been neglected for a few decades. So we're really excited to partner with the city and you all in that. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I think <clears throat> there's a, a another comment that I'm gonna read. Um, for us to answer um, is from Sally. It says, do you have ideas, suggestions for using the hands-on space when it reopens? And may be able to also help with that question. Yeah, I mean, I can say that we're rethinking the whole notion of whether or not a hands-on space is just in one place, or if we really think about the whole collection and how do we create opportunities for people to engage throughout the collection, um, you know, when it's safe to do so. So we actually have a grant right now where we're learning how to engage with the public and get interviews from the public. And certainly that could be part of the artist in residency as well about what stories they wanna hear and what they wanna learn and how do we bring underrepresented voices into our collection when perhaps the collection doesn't represent everybody. Um, and so that hands-on component is definitely a part of that. That was funded through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And it's we're in about six months into a two-year project with that. So stay tuned. Um, it's definitely not, it's definitely coming back, just definitely not in the same way that it was. And one of the things I'd like to say is, you know, the, the museum and yourself, program team, everyone has been really flexible about how 
to reimagine the museum and reutilize the museum from ways that people may not be as familiar with. And that's been a really great experience um, for us, you know, whether, like you said, you're a visual arts museum, you're running a, there's like a vocal workshop happening. There was a DJ uh, <laughs> launch in front of the, in front of the space. Um, and that was really amazing for us to be able to do that in front of Tina Brewer's work. Um, you know, just like some of your other programs that we've seen and talked about, it's been cool to see a museum be really flexible and still be presenting like high quality content uh, digitally while also, you know, on the ground, whether we're operating as artists um, or I'm running around with my kid, which really puts me in a visitorship. You know, it's like everything has been really clean and clear and, and up to date. And we just want to say, you know, that's great. So community members in Westmoreland County um, and even in the greater Pittsburgh region should feel really confident about, you know, what changes or growth are coming to the museum. Um, you know, we really want to be a testament to that. Yeah. So we got another. Uh, Performers are always around. <laughs> <laughs> These are always we got great. another question. They want they want to know a little bit more about the park BS. They want to know what we what we're doing in the park. Yeah, we're working at the Spring Avenue Park, uh, which is by the hospital. Um, it's also by the Prannels Bakery, which is awesome, um, in the Greensburg area. And right now we're going through an interview process. We're still looking for folks to interview. Um, and just talk about their memories, their history, and their relationship to the park. These interviews, these one-on-ones, um, these storytelling sessions uh, will help to guide the future of the park and what public art can look like in the park. Oh, it's right here. Oh, sorry, our plug is coming out. Um, so, you know, we're just we're paying people and be, to be able to interview them because we want to value people's creative content. You know, we're artists. We know that that's extremely important. Um, we're looking for folks who are wanting to be interviewed. We've had a few interviews already <laughs> and really wanting to talk to youth, uh, whether that be elementary, middle school, um, and high school age youth to see what is the authentic usage of the park and what the park could be. Um, we have uh, a lot of experience, you know, the park really reminds me of something that you would find um, in a it's in a densely packed um, residential area. So it's a park that you would really find that happens in the city. Uh, Boom is close to a parklet of the same size that was recently um, identified and upgraded with like a water spray feature and some new equipment. Um, you know, we've had some amazing travels to see um, uh instruments in a public art setting, um, you know, different uh, horticultural designs in a public art setting. So we just want to lend an ear and an eye um, and some facilitation in a different way to help people re-envision what this park can look like. Um, and it has a great basketball court. So, you know, that's always a start. You know, you're never going wrong when the spot has a basketball court. Talk a little bit too about just the your experience at Boom with play spaces. Yeah, you know, we are always kind of been a play space, not only for adults, but for youth, um, for practitioners, for community members. Uh, we've kind of really been uh, identified like as a safe space for people of all identities and backgrounds. Um, so, you know, we look at our space not only as a workspace for artists, but also as a play space for artists to explore themselves. And we're really going to be bringing uh, that experience to this public art project. And then, you know, our connection as educators, you know, I've been a preschool teacher. Um, I've taught art at the juvenile detention center. Um, we've done college lectures. So really encouraging people to use creativity um, not only in their everyday lives, but in the spaces where they find joy. You know, not only can art be used as a translation tool, um, in which I think we're doing a lot of in our residency, but making sure that art and creative process 
can be a tool for joy um, and a tool for play as well. So, you know, I've, that's always been an important part of my personal practice. Um, I've lent a hand and uh, and some elbow grease on building Kaboom pay- playgrounds around Pittsburgh over the past 15 years in different capacities um, at Boom Concepts. We've been a part of different projects, specifically uh, with PPG Paints, where we've done um, rebuilds and uh, help do redesigns and public art spaces. A lot of times in community centers, um, I'm thinking specifically of a, um, a basketball mural that we yeah. did in Turtle Creek. So, you know, really taking the identity um, and some of the symbols that were present in that neighborhood, help them uh, redesign their basketball court, put a huge turtle logo on it, you know, something that's cute, it speaks. Uh, so we're really interested in bringing a, a bu- all of those experiences uh, to this this park and public art facilitation because, you know, I think what folks are have a desire for is that the public art piece, you know, there will be some temporary projects um, that will operate as the site is gaining its overall redevelopment. Um, and then ideally there's some permanent um, infrastructure uh, that's artistic and that this artistic lens really is a linchpin to like a long-term redevelopment of this site. And so that people can enjoy it. It could become a destination place. Folks that are at the hospital can enjoy it. Um, and it becomes one of those, you know, added cultural um locations in Greensburg, you know, one of those great surprises, just like the museum. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I think we're, you know, we're coming close to our time. We need to get in contact with Pamela Cooper. Yes, very much so. <laughs> all right. I've got a info. Oh, okay. All right. There we go. <laughs> um, you know, I kind of also, too, want to just talk about you know, we've been talking about what's next um, and thinking about, I think real briefly too, just talking about how, you know, this would be great for the other artists coming in. Um, You know, we have two artists that have been checking out information, pulling together um, plans on what they wanted to do throughout the rest of the year. Um, You know, can we talk about Gavin a little bit? Um, you know, and if you also too want to talk about some information on that and, you know, building around the residency, around the other artists. Sure. So, I mean, I will say that an artist in residency program is a completely new experience for us. So we are so thankful to DS and Anquinique for being the first, you know, um, uh, test pilot, so to speak. Um, We learned so much and I think we now feel like we have the confidence to go into future iterations. So the next artist in residency is going to be Gavin Benjamin. And yay, Gavin um, is a multimedia artist, uh, comes out of photography practice, (laughs) specifically in the fashion industry. So Um, You can see in some of his work, it's, um, you know, based on photography and collage and embellishment. I think we have a couple of examples um, of his work. Yeah. So you can see here and he's he's definitely pulling on, um, you know, uh, 16th century, 17th century um, art history as well. So Gavin is going to take that same paneled room that Diaz and Anquinique did their chess match in and create a set. Uh, And the set is gonna be unique to a variety of different um, black residents of Westmoreland County. So he's gonna be photographing them in that space. He's gonna be just like you all did. He's gonna be mining the collection and using um, decorative arts and artworks in in the space along with set design. Um, And then photographing those subjects um, and, you know, as as a gift for doing that, not only paying them for their time and their creativity as a sitter, but giving them um, a print so that they have a, a you know memory of that experience. Um, and then he's not sure if that's going to be straight photography or embellished and collaged like these. So that's an evolving process. But that'll be a four month um, residency. And then um, we are cooking up the next one following Gavin, which will be shortly thereafter, starting in August. So um, 
I just wanted to say Gavin has some amazing uh, portrait work as part of a public art project downtown right now um, where he has identified different athletes um, and two of the athletes that he mined, I just had to uh, Google it, um, are Chuck Cooper, who was the first NBA player. He's an African-American, first African-American NBA player uh, from Duquesne University. And that was like just some amazing research on Gavin's part. You know, not a lot of people know that about Pittsburgh and their that relationship to basketball. And then he also has uh, the one and only Swin Cash, a uh, WNBA legend who's from the region uh, as part of the Public Art Project. So, you know, Gavin being next up is just like really exciting. Um, and we're looking to uh, see how his work lays in the area. Yeah, we're really excited. And um, he'll be doing just like you did too. He'll be doing some programs. So we're excited to co um, produce those with Boom and, and um, promote those as well. And then we will be 10 months into this two year partnership after his residency. So we'll have many more, many more artists and residents to come. And I think that was the great thing is experimenting. Like not everything has to be six months. Some are gonna be shorter, some may be longer, different disciplines. Um, so yeah, it's been a really exciting and fun journey and I'm just grateful to all three of you for it. Thank you, Ann. It's been a, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, you and your team are amazing. Um, so, <laughs> and uh, here you want to sit? No, I can't find it. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll look for it in a little bit. Come on, let's go look for it. And so, you know, we're just really grateful. And, um, you know, when people we'll ask us, it. well, how did that happen? Like, how did you guys even come together? It's really, you know, we always say it was really just, you know, years of, of nurturing a relationship and just coming back and, you know, me coming up to perform and, and do, and, and us bringing different programming over the years. And so we're really um, uh, grateful that we're at this place and we're excited for more artists to come and, oh, you found it. Oh my goodness. Um, so we're excited for more artists to come and have the same experience. And um, yeah, we thank you guys. You know, I'm, I'm thankful too, you know, that me and Ann were able to co connect, you know, via our other group and just, you know, even start to have discussions before we even came up and thought about doing a residency and, you know, and how an art impacts our areas and, you know, really being able to sit back and, and hear what the museum wanted to do. And then also think about how Boone can connect you know, I, I think so so often, you know, people are always like, give us this. And, you know, we're always coming from a place of like, how can we collaborate? How can we help you reach a place that you want to get to? And then also, you know, thinking about how we spread the word of, you know, connecting with black and brown, um, you know, femme, queer artists. Um, and, you know, just really build unique experiences. I mean, we've been doing this for seven years. And, you know, being able to do this and see, you know, my partners do this work, you know, it's great. You know, it's great to see this, you know, stretch out to Westmoreland, you know, probably, you know, I was at Westmoreland. I came up before for um, a group meeting and we explored some of the work. And I, I think that was two years ago, I think maybe a year and a half, two years ago now. So, you know, really seeing this come around and everybody be able to work and see some cool work happening. Um, you know, it's, it's a blessing. It's, it's very awesome to see. And on that note, <laughs> We'll see you need some more practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>